Vivian the Psalm next door. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be covering red wines for winter. So if you're really into full body, lots of flavor, keep watching. So we've already done Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot from Bordeaux, we've done Pinot Noirs from Burgundy, and we've done Nebbiolo style wines like Barolo and Barbaresco. So those are all winter wines. For sure, I love all of those wines, which is why I covered them. So check out those videos if you wanna learn more. But today I kinda of wanna go over, you know, outside those famous regions, what else is out there for winter? And this is not an exhaustive list, you guys. I know there are plenty of other wines out there, but, but this is just to like get your brain percolating for other ideas. The first thing I want to start off with it are Cabernets. So there are lots of different types of Cabernets besides Bordeaux. Other famous places to get Cabernets is California, Napa, Sonoma. California Cabernets are everywhere. If we go south, uh, you can go to Chile. So that's one of the wines that I have today. Chile in Colchagua, which is famous for Cabernet Sauvignons. Honestly, I I like Chile a lot because it's very price friendly and in Chile, they don't have to spray as many pesticides or anything because it's just dry. They don't have to worry about fungus. There's not that many bugs out there. And you know, a good wine just to have at the ready. Other places to check out, Australia. I personally love Margaret River Cabernet Sauvignon, so it's kind of hard to find where I am, but whenever I see it, I like to grab a bottle. Or Kunawara, that's also a very famous region. Check those places out for Cabernet Sauvignon. But, 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 but the point of all this is, let's kind of like expand our horizons and see what else is out there. We're gonna go to Spain. And it is not the Rioja, but Priorat. Priorat is located in Northeast Spain. It's high elevation. If you see pictures of Priorat, you're like, oh my God, how do grapes even grow here? And that's kind of part of the reason why the wine is so good. The vines are low yielding, so the grapes are super intense. So it gives you a very intense, powerful, rich wine. Lots of like blackberry, spice, chocolate. Definitely a wine that benefits from aging and can age for a long time. And I highly recommend having this with food. I don't think this is a wine that you want to just like casually sip. I mean, you can do whatever you want, but I think this is definitely a food wine. Would go great with roasted meats or maybe some like barbecue pork chops, some oxtail. So this wine, you need some flavor. We want some flavor in here. The next wine I'm going to be talking about is kind of multi-prong because there are a lot of different types of this wine. So we are moving on to Italy. This wine is in Amarone. Amarone della Valpolicella. That's like the full name. Valpolicella being the place but the grape is actually Corvina. Amarone is like quintessential winter wine. You could totally drink this by a fireplace. You have your, your covers next to you and you're binging on Netflix. Like this is like a beautiful wine to do that. Like you could drink by itself or you can have it with a meal because it's not that tannic, but it is very like velvety, rich, powerful raisins and chocolate. These are kind of pricey oh. because the method to making them is a little bit involved. So what they do is they take the Corvina grapes and they dry them. It concentrates the juice and basically makes a very sweet juice when they press it. More sugar means that they're able to have more alcohol. So this wine is 16% alcohol, which actually isn't abnormal. So check out Amarones. They're one of my favorites in the winter. 
I was saying that this wine, there's multi tiers to it. Amorone and Rizzotto della Valpolicella are DOCGs, like high quality stuff. Rizzotto, that's a sweet wine. Similarly, they have the dried grapes, but instead of fermenting all the sugars into alcohol, they stop the fermentation. So the wine is a little sweet and it's delicious with chocolate. It's so good. Next up on the list of fun red wines to try this winter and that's the one i am drinking right now is a shiraz whenever you see shiraz it's from australia there are different styles of shiraz when it, the shiraz is from barossa valley it is very fruit forward, but like spicy tannins, like a lovely spicy afternoon with a velvety texture. And I think these are wonderful for the winter. I don't think I would want to drink these in the summer, to be honest. And these are pretty good drink now wines. You don't have to wait for it like Priorot. Like Priorot. Oh my god, tongue twisters. So this would be great with like barbecue meats. Ooh, yeah. Smoked sausage, some beef stew. Like I'm doing right now, you can drink this by itself. Pro tip, you guys. Don't be drinking this on your first date. It's, it's just not cute. But other than that, it is a amazing wine and highly recommend. Those were more full body wines. Now we're gonna go into some alternatives. I love Pinot Noir, I do. I really love Burgundian Pinot Noirs, but like, let's get interesting, right? Let's change it up. So Etna Rosa is from Sicily, Eastern Sicily. Like, ooh, you can impress your friends and be like, look what I got. It has been deemed the Burgundy of the Mediterranean. <laughs> it is grown in volcanic soil. So the two grapes in Etna Rosso, Norello Mascalese and Norello Cappuccio. And it literally, like one of the key descriptors is like, it's ashy. It's concentrated in flavor, but it's not heavy at all. Similar to a Pinot Noir, it's very versatile in food pairings. So it can pair with salmon. It can pair with like a, another fatty fish because it has an earthy note to it, mushrooms. It goes really well with tomato sauce. It's a little eccentric, but I think it is a great wine for winter. Those are the wines that I have, but honorable, honorable mentions. Zino Mavro is a nice, little swappy swap for a Nebbiola wine. I know people are going to comment and be like, what about this wine? I know, I know, I know. There's so many Italian wines out there. Um, I'll try to quickly list a couple that would be great for the winter. So Alianico, that's a great wine. Nera de Avola, which is another Sicilian wine that is pretty solid. Torre de Tinta, that's up and coming. Very powerful wine in Spain. Tanat, I'm not a huge fan of Tanat, but that is a heavy hitter. So those are some honorable mentions. Well, those are the wines that I'm drinking this winter. I hope you guys got some inspiration of different red wines to drink. Comment down below if I missed your favorite wine and what you're drinking this winter. Let me know what other wine regions that you want me to cover or other topics. And hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already. And cheers, you guys. I'll catch you guys later.